Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me this fine Saturday morning. If you want to follow along, if you would, uh, we'll be starting the seventh chapter of the book of Acts today. And uh, if you will, like, share, comment uh, on the post, and I would appreciate that. And then let's uh, dig right in. This is really just a continuation of chapter six. Uh, as Stephen has now, uh, the charges have been brought against Stephen for his uh, preaching and he uh, is given the opportunity to respond are these things so uh, the high priest asked and here's Stephen's answer I just want to uh, read what he says brothers and fathers hear me the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran and said to him go out from your land and from your kindred and go into the land that I will show you then he went out from the land of Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And after his father died, God removed him from there into this land in which you are now living. Yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as a possession and to his offspring after him, though he had no child. And God spoke to this effect that his offspring would be sojourners in a land belonging to others, who would enslave them and afflict them 400 years. But I will judge the nation that they serve, said God, and after that they shall come out and worship me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the 12 patriarchs. It may seem like a... Um, uh, an odd answer. If you remember back at the end of chapter 6, uh, Stephen was charged with uh, preaching. We've heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. Uh, he, uh, he never ceases to speak words against the holy place and the law. We've heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place. Uh, and so it seems a little bit uh, odd that Stephen goes back and gives them a history uh, slash genealogy lesson. Uh, what he does, he goes all the way back to Abraham and God telling Abraham to leave his home country, uh, leave behind his family, um, and go to another land, uh, a land that God would show him. It doesn't give him specific directions at the time. And so uh, Abraham does uh, leave, he goes, and he uh, eventually would arrive in the land uh, where they were, uh, where Stephen and these leaders were at that time. But Abraham himself, he says, he never actually inherited the land. Uh, God had promised, he says in verse 5, uh, to give it to his descendants. And so the Jewish leaders uh, of Stephen's day have now uh, they have become so caught up in their <clears throat> in their rituals and their routines, uh, their uh, their religion, um, even the law itself. They have become so um, so caught up in, uh, in in looking for every little um, thing of the law that they could possibly hold against someone or. Uh, exaggerate and and uh, and and the, just um, follow examining the law so closely uh, that they had either missed the fact or sometime had known it and now have forgotten it that what God really wanted was a relationship uh, with His people. Um, while again the land was important and had been given. Uh, it was uh, given to Abraham's descendants. Uh, the reason for that uh, is because of Abraham having a relationship uh, with God. And so Stephen goes on now and says uh, in verse 6, uh, verse 6 and 7, he talks about how that uh, God had predicted uh, that Abraham's descendants would eventually lose the land, that they would be carried away and held captive uh, in a foreign land for uh, 400 years and that eventually uh, God would deliver them and bring them back to this land. Uh, so once again, they could worship him. 
uh, again so that they could have a relationship with him. Um, and so the land um, was important, just like it is today, uh, but the land was the, 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 the means where they were to gather and to worship God and to have a relationship uh, with God. Um, it was more about them being the people of God than it was them saying, well, we possess a section of land. Uh, that this is our country. And so he goes through here, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 patriarchs, uh, the 11 who sell their, uh, the 11 of those who sold Joseph into slavery. Um, and yet uh, he's going to go on and talk about how uh, God stayed with Joseph and remained with Joseph and eventually used that uh, to, uh, to deliver God's people. Um, but again, th there's, there's two things, uh, really, that um, are being stressed in this, uh, in this piece of, uh, of Stephen's message, and that is um, that we have to uh, not be distracted uh, by the, the world and the material things of this world. Uh, our focus has to be uh, on our uh, on our worship, on our relationship uh, with God, and again, that's what had went astray, went off course in the nation of Israel. They had gotten so caught up in the routine, the ritual, uh, the legal uh, aspects of the law, and uh, you know, wanting everybody just to march in step. Um, and follow those, you know, just uh, just being um, unbearing about, uh, you know, unbearable about their um, enforcement of the law and never emphasizing their relationship uh, with God himself, never emphasizing the fact, again, that God wanted a relationship, that he had brought them in this land so that they could have a relationship with him. And... Uh, you know, I think that is uh, still today a great lesson for believers today. Uh, sometimes we get so caught up um, in ritual and routine. What's somebody wearing? Um, you know, that there, you know, there's been all kinds of things over the years. The church, you know, you can't go dancing. You can't play cards. Uh, don't wear makeup. You know, um, don't men shouldn't have long hair. Or women. You have to wear dresses, you, you know, you know, the, the laundry list of those things. And we get so caught up in the ritual and the routine that we miss our relationship with him. God wants to have a relationship with his people. Um, he, he wants to hear from us. He wants to communicate with us. He wants us to know his word. Um, and, and again, there's nothing wrong you know, the Bible's full of many laws and rules that we that we follow, but those laws and, and rules and routines in Scripture are all made to point us and bring us into a closer relationship uh, with Him, and we tend to focus on the law and miss the lawgiver. All right, hope you think about that. Have a good day, and we'll see you here uh, Monday morning.